Victory in Jesus.
So um, I didn't say I was going to preach, and I'm not. Uh, but uh, I did say I could do a five-minute diesel, so hopefully we'll be able to beat the rain if we've got five more minutes. Um, and uh, the thoughts, I want to give credit tonight to some of the thoughts that we're going to cover uh, to a guy named Barnabas Piper. He's John Piper's son, his other one, who isn't a, uh, an atheist uh, opponent. So um, anyway, he did a Bible study on doubt that I went through with some students, and I uh, kind of inspired some of these thoughts. Um, if you buy my book, we'll be in chapter 11. So um, anyway, anyway um, you know, I was thinking about um, how, you know, have you ever seen, like, you look at a wheat field before it's been cut, and when the wind comes through, it just you see the, whole, the wheat just kind of shift and, and just changes the color, the, the picture, and you see the wave of the wind going through the wheat or a grass field, uh, and uh, that reminds me of Matthew chapter 11, when John the Baptist is in prison, and he, if we look at, at Matthew chapter 11, and I'll go ahead and read it, starting in verse 2, it says, Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word to his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered him, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, these who wear so those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. When did what then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare the way before you. Truly, I say to you, among those born of women, there is arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. And, uh, and he just, he extols John. And, and so what we see in a moment here is we see that, that John, I mean, this is, Jesus literally just said, there is no one greater born among, like, if you are human, John is up here. Okay? Like, you play second fiddle to John the Baptist. But what did John say to Jesus literally moments before that speech? Are you the one? Are you the one? So John, John is in prison, and, and on, he's, John's on death row, and he's thinking at this point in his life, did I make a mistake? Like, this isn't how it's supposed to be. Like, he's a little, like, this, I didn't see it going this way. Here he is, he's, he is, he's getting ready to lose his life, thinking that the Messiah, because he had the same idea that everybody else did, that the Messiah was going to come in a little different way. You're not supposed to be a suffering servant, you're supposed to be a conquering hero. And here I am. Here I am on death row. What's going on? Are you the one? And he expresses his doubt. And I think there's a few lessons that we can take from that. But before we do, I just want to I just want to throw it open and say, have you ever have you ever had doubt? Have you ever dealt with doubt in your life? Have you ever had that moment where you're wondering, like, what if I'm wrong? What if what if there is no God? What if, what, if, what if I've just blown it somehow and I've wasted all this time? Anyone ever struggle with that? Everyone ever gone through a wilderness moment where, you know, maybe it's just something bad happened in your life? I mean, I know in this family we've had, we've seen some, we've seen some trials, right? We've been through some stuff. And in the midst of that, you pray and you say, God, please, if this cup might pass, please let it go. But like Jesus, God said no. No. This is the way it's going to happen. And it's easy in the wake of tragedy. It's easy in the wake of crisis. It's easy in the, in the wake of failure and fear to to begin to doubt. And I see, you see this with students all the time. It happens in, in anyone who's been through that, those kind of experiences. People go through divorce. People go through... Through, uh, we we so we have suffered loss. People go through financial crisis. They lose their job. They lose their their home. They have to declare bankruptcy. People suffer all kinds of. People go through serious critical illness all the time. And in the middle of that, like John, they begin to wonder, 
What if? What if I got it wrong? John's on death row, and Jesus compares him to a reed swaying in the breeze. Is that what you came to see? Because John isn't that. And that's what I love about this passage, that in the midst of his crisis, Jesus has John's back. Tell you, tell you, go back to your master. He tells the disciples of John who were sent to Jesus to go back and you tell my cousin, you tell my cousin that you have seen the signs of the Messiah. You've seen the dead raised to life. You have seen the blind given sight. You've seen the sick healed. You tell him miracles are happening. And after they've left, he, he just tells the crowd, that is the greatest man of, among men. And I think that gives us an opportunity to learn something from how John dealt with doubt and how Jesus responds in that moment. There's four things that stand out to me. The first thing is that John, when John struggled with doubt, he didn't beat himself up. That's, that's what a lot of people do. You dealing when you're dealing with doubt, it's a very common response, isn't it? We're like, man, what, there must be something wrong with me. I mean, we, we see this all the time. People begin to struggle with something, and they think the problem was with them, and they don't want to share it. Then, right? They keep it inside. Like they, the first thing they do is they beat themselves up. There's something wrong with me. It's my fate. I'm the weak one. I'm the one who's failing. I'm, there's just maybe God doesn't love me after all because I can't figure this. I don't have enough faith to even just believe so wholeheartedly. Like I'm like I'm struggling here with even just basic belief. Maybe I'm the failure. I'm just it's just me. But John. John doesn't beat himself up. We don't see that evidence in, in Scripture. He doesn't beat himself up. The second thing that John does right is he doesn't hide his struggle either. That's the other thing that we do. After we beat ourselves up, we keep it to ourselves. We don't share that. We just internalize it. Why do you think we do that? Why do you think people are afraid to share what they're really going through in a time of crisis and faith? I think they're scared people will judge them and think that their faith isn't strong enough. Yeah, embarrassment, judgment, yeah. vulnerability. Fear of man. Have we, huh? Fear of man. Fear of man. Have we, as, as a church, do we do that? Is it fair to say that that's a problem? Yeah. I think it's fair to say. I think if we're going to be honest about our faith, that we have to recognize that if we're be honest about our the church, the church struggles in ways too. The church is made up of a collection of sinners. It's not perfect, right? And so it's natural. So we beat ourselves up. We keep it to ourselves. And John did neither of those. And neither should we. If we're dealing with doubt or if you know somebody who's dealing with doubt, if they have the, the bravery to express it to you, even in privately, you know, there's there's a response to that as well. So we so John doesn't beat himself up. He doesn't struggle. What does he do? What does he do? He seeks the truth. John seeks answers. If doubt, if you're dealing, when you're dealing with doubt or you know somebody who is, Find, just start start answering the question. Like, go after it. Don't don't let it build up and build up and don't do something about it. Do something about it. John John was like, I'm not I'm not going down without a fight, right? I mean, if I'm rotten on prison and on death row here in prison, I'm going to do something about this. And so he seeks answers, and that's the least we can do with someone. If you know somebody or if you're dealing with it yourself, the least you can do is just I mean, just seek the truth. Go find out. Look, our faith is more than 2,000 years old. The answer is out there. You are not the first person to ask whatever question you have on your heart that you're afraid to go after. Like, you're, whatever you're dealing with, I guarantee in 2,000 years, from the cross to today, somebody else dealt with it. So, so know that there's an answer out there. Go look, go look for truth. And the fourth thing that, it, that he does is he seeks truth, but he seeks it from the source. People go to the world. They go to they go to their friends. They go to the the internet. They go. I mean, people go to all kinds of crazy places looking for answers. John goes to the source of all truth. He goes back to Jesus. That's where he. That's where he sends his. He doesn't say, "Hey, go ask the Pharisees." He doesn't say, hey, uh, you know, I'm in prison. Go ask, go ask Caesar. He says, go. He says, go to Jesus and ask him. Ask the man directly. So don't beat yourself up. Don't be, don't, don't be afraid to let it be known. 
Don't hide your struggle. Do something when it's when a question hits. Do something. And seek it from seek truth from the source. Those are the four things I see that John does in dealing with doubt. He's not a reed swaying in the breeze. You look across next time you see a field in a wave of the waves of grain in our great America. Waving fields of grain, you can think back to John the Baptist and remember that John was no reed swaying in the breeze. And we don't have to be either. We can just do what he did, and you'll be okay. All right. You guys want to pray with me? We'll get out of the rain. Heavenly Father, so much. <clears throat> thank you so much for the example of John the Baptist. Sometimes in my own life, I feel that sense of what if, and I imagine that a lot of other people do also. Knowing that greater people than I have had to deal with doubts gives me hope. Thank you that when my salvation, my faith, excuse me, is shaken, shallow, weak, and weary, your faith in me remains steadfast and strong. Remind me to turn to you first when doubts creep into my life. You are the light even when I feel blind. Let my soul rejoice in the warmth of your glory even when my senses can't feel it. You are the God of all truth. Amen. Get out of there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.